I want to talk to you today about commissions. This is the third part of our three part installment on the ABCs of the Bible. And, and the, the purpose of these three sermons is it's a teaching. It's not about, it's simply teaching you, the Christian, to better understand the Bible. Because I believe there's so much confusion out there amongst Christians and churches. So these are specifically designed to teach you, the body of Christ, the truth regarding what the scripture says. In our first message we spoke about administration or in dispensation. We recognize that God dealt with different people at different times, giving them different instructions. And these different times or ages are called dispensation or administration. And we understand from that that there's uh, one specific dispensation called the dispensation of grace, which is Paul's writings to the church. And it's in these writings alone that we find the instructions for the body of Christ the church. The problem with churches today is that we've muddled up these dispensations and we've got a real confused message going out there. Last week we spoke about baptisms. Who enjoyed that message? Did you understand a bit more about baptism? I hope you did. We spoke about the different baptisms in the Bible. We understand that there's water baptism and there's a spiritual baptism. John the Baptist came baptizing with water in the Gospels. The apostles continued that. They continued throughout the Gospels until the book of Acts, Acts chapter 2, where they continued to baptize with water, but also then there was a benefit of the Holy Spirit which is called the Spirit Baptism. The Holy Spirit came and baptized the believers and they started to have miraculous signs and wonders. They went out doing miracles, preaching the gospel of the kingdom to the Jews. And this was to authenticate their ministry. And then we understand that because of their rejection of the Messiah, because of the rejection of the Holy Spirit due to the killing of the apostles and their persecution, they rejected the kingdom. So God suspended his dealings with the Jews. That whole program of the, of the miracle signs and wonders, the whole gospel of the kingdom, and water baptism, he suspended and stopped. And he raised up the Apostle Paul and gave him a new revelation, a mystery. It's called the mystery in the Bible. And he said, Paul, I want you to go out to the Gentiles. Preach the gospel of Jesus to the whole world. And with that commission came a commission of baptism. But it wasn't water baptism. In all his references in his 14 books, he only mentions water baptism once. And he says that he has not been commissioned, not been sent to baptize with water. Paul does speak about a spiritual baptism. The baptism whereby we are baptized into the body of Christ by the Holy Spirit. This is different from the Acts baptism. In Acts 2 it was Jesus baptizing believers with the Holy Spirit. Paul's baptism is the other way around. It's the Holy Spirit baptizing believers into the body of Christ. Today we're going to look at our third one which is called the C4 Commission. The Commission is an instruction. A formal instruction given to a person or a group of persons to follow out a certain set of instructions. In the Bible, most Christians and churches agree that there is one great commission. The great commission found in chapters like John 21, the end of the Gospel of John, end of the Gospel of Mark, as well, uh, at the end of all the Gospels we find this one, also in the first part of the book of Acts. Put up your hand if you've heard of or familiar with the great commission. One of you. Only one person, I understand. Uh, as a Christian, in your Christian life, you should have heard of this, the Great Commission. Because this will be the last instructions that Jesus gave his disciples. So if you haven't heard of this Great Commission, you're probably not following it anyway. Most churches, most Christians, would have heard of, are very familiar with the Great Commission, because this, they believe, is the final instruction for us, the church. This is what we should be carrying out. The only problem with that uh, thought or view is that there's not only one commission in the Bible. There's actually three commissions in the New Testament. And let's look at them. The first one is simply going to be called the commissioning of Christ's earthly ministry, the commission of Christ's earthly ministry to the twelve. I agree that's a rather lengthy heading. I never have big ones like this, only only one or two, two words. This one is all important because as we'll see as we go through the message, all those words are important. Let's look at them quick. The commission, which is God's, uh, Jesus' instructions, formal instructions, uh, as while he was on earth, as during his ministry on earth before his death and resurrection. And it was to who? The twelve apostles. So there we go. So the first one is is Jesus giving formal instructions to his twelve apostles before his death and resurrection. And we find this in Matthew chapter 10. Let's read that. It says, uh, Matthew chapter 10, These twelve, the twelve apostles, Jesus sent out with the following instructions, Do not go among the Gentiles or any other town of the Samaritan. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, proclaim this message, The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead. Cleanse those who have leprosy. Drive out demons freely you have received. 
freely give. This is the first commission that God gives to his uh, apostles. And he sends them out and, and it's very specific. Who must they go to? Israel, the Jews, only. He actually says specifically, do not go to the world, do not go to the Samaritans, but only go to the Jews. And what must they preach? The message is the kingdom. The kingdom of God is at hand. John the Baptist preaches, the apostles preaches, Jesus himself did. It was a long-awaited and prophesied kingdom. They prophesied this through the Old Testament. Now Jesus as Messiah had come as the King of Kings and he was going to set up his very physical little kingdom on earth and would reign for a thousand years. This is what the Jews were waiting and anticipating. So when the apostles came, they came preaching to the Jews. The kingdom of heaven is coming, guys. Repent, be baptized, receive Jesus as your Messiah because the kingdom's coming and you have to enter into that kingdom. So the message was very simple, the gospel of the kingdom. The last part was the ministry. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers. It was all to do with miracles, signs and wonders. As I said before, that was their commission. They had to do these miracles to authenticate their ministry. To prove that they were of God. They had to do these miracles so the Jews would believe them. And then the Jews would believe them and then say, Alright, great, we accept Jesus as Messiah. Bring the kingdom. Yay. So at each one of these commissions we see three elements. We see the members, which is who are the recipients of these, of, this, of this commission. This one is the Jews. The members are ultimately going to be the Jews and the Jews only. And the message is the kingdom of God is at hand. And the ministry is miracles, signs and wonders and also water baptism. Because we know that they've been doing this anyway. They've just been following suit of what John the Baptist done. Baptizing with water for the remission of sin. So this is the first commission that Jesus gives his apostles. It's not the only one. It moves on to our second commission. Number two commission is the commission of Christ's resurrection ministry. So there we get a different word. Do you remember what the first word was? Earthly. This one is resurrection. This one he gave to his apostles after his death and resurrection. And it's the same. It's a commission, formal instruction, given after his death and resurrection to the twelve. Alright, so let's read that in Matthew 28. This is kind of the big, the, the big chapter on the Great Commission. And I know you've read it before, and if you really look closely in your Bible, you'll probably see the words, the Great Commission, above these verses. Has anybody seen that in, in the Bible? Uh, some of you are smiling, yeah. So if you haven't really heard about it, you've probably read it hundreds of times. In Matthew 28, above this verse, actually says, in bold letters, the Great Commission. And this is what it says. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee. Why eleven? Who was they? Judas, well done. The other shop. There's some cakes for those who got that right at the end. Uh, the, Judas had committed suicide by then. He went to Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, saw him they worshipped, but some doubted. I really found that odd. Eleven apostles, they've been with Jesus throughout everything. They saw his miracles. They saw his death and resurrection. Yes, Jesus in the flesh in his resurrection. And yet they still doubt. But anyway, then Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Put up your hand if you've ever read that verse before. Now you know what the Great Commission is. The Great Commission is actually elements of a lot of other verses put together. Because there's elements in Matthew and in Mark and Luke where we've got to kind of put the story together. But the, the last instructions that Jesus gives his apostles is found at the end of all the Gospels, at the last chapter, and also the early part of the book of Acts, Acts chapter 1. So what we just read now was just one element. And we'll find out that it's also at different times. In Matthew, Jesus talks on a mountain. And in Mark, he talks in a room while he's eating uh, with the apostles. And then in Luke we see him on the Mount of Olives. So every time he gives a, a portion of the Great Commission, it's at a different place, a different time. But the times is at his resurrection. It's prior to him leaving the earth. So this is what we understand as the Great Commission, or let me rephrase that, the so-called Great Commission. Because this is the final instruction that Jesus gives his disciples. And let's look at the members. Who does this go to? All nations. Did you hear that? Go, go, go to everybody, go to the whole world. But it was in a definite order. There was a definite order that God gave. And we find that here in Luke chapter 24. It says this, And repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem, with the Jews. 
And we find that again in Acts chapter 1. The same, he gives the same commission just before he leaves the earth, ascends into the glories of heaven. He says, you shall be witnesses to me in where? Jerusalem. And in Judea and in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Notice this one is a little bit different from the first commission. In the first commission, Jesus says, don't go to the world, don't go to the Samaritans, but only go to the Jews. Yeah? It's reversed. He says, go first to the Jews, once you have won them over and they have received me as the Messiah, then go to the Samaritans, and then go to the ends of the earth. So this is the only part of the commissions that actually change. The rest of the commissions is still pretty much the same. The gospel being preached is the gospel of the kingdom. Matthew 24, 14 says, the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to the whole world. Who's got a good news Bible? Put up your hand. The good news in the Bible is referred to the good news of the kingdom of God. Did you know that? That's where the word comes from, good news. And that's what was preached. At this time, even during the gospel period, there, there was no talk of the salvation of Jesus through his blood and things like that. It was always meant and always going to be that. It was always the plan of salvation. But the gospel preached was the gospel of the kingdom. And that's what the Jews are waiting for. In Acts 1, as I said, this is also just prior to Jesus leaving the earth, his final instructions. Uh, this is what it says. And the apostles met together with Jesus and asked him, Lord, will you at this time give the kingdom back to Israel? They were anticipating it. Jesus, you're going up now. When's the kingdom coming? You know, you, we preached it, you preached it. What? When? They were expecting the imminent return of Jesus Christ to set up his kingdom. And that was the plan. Jesus would go up to heaven and we'd wait for the Jews to repent and receive him as Messiah. Then he would come back and set up a physical kingdom on earth. And this is what the apostles were referring to. Because they knew it's at the end. Jesus had died and resurrected. He's going up to heaven. So the only question left was, and the kingdom? Are you going to restore it? Are you going to, are you going to come back and set up the kingdom? So this was the gospel. The gospel of the kingdom. And let's look at the ministry. The, miracle, uh, the, the ministry we find in Mark 16. It says this at the end of the gospel of Mark. The same great commission. He who believes will be baptized and saved. Water baptism. Uh, but he who does not believe will be condemned, naturally. And these things shall follow them that believe. In my name they will cast out demons, speak in new tongues, and it goes on to say they will drink poison, pick up poisonous snakes, and they will heal many. So again, the commission was to the Jews first, was always going to be to the chosen nation, and then through them, the rest of the world would be blessed. The message was very simple, the kingdom of heaven at hand, because that was the only message they preached at that time. Prior to that time, they didn't preach the blood of Jesus for salvation. It was the gospel of the kingdom. And what would follow them? Miracles, signs and wonders, and water baptism. So this is the Great Commission. Most churches, most Christians, will adhere in some form or the other to this Great Commission. The problem is, the churches today pick and choose what part of this commission they want to suit their doctrine or their church belief. For example, you get Roman Catholics. Roman Catholics believe in baptism, water baptism, for remission of sin. But they don't believe that people have the power to do miracles, signs and wonders. They do, however, believe that there are certain miracles that get performed at different shrines. Have you ever heard of the bleeding Marys and the, the stigmata? So those are miraculous signs that the, the Catholics hold to that is part of this. But they don't believe that people have the power to do this. Then you get the Pentecostals, the Charismatics, who believe very much in miracles, signs and wonders. So much so that they promote this in a sense to say that if you're a Christian, you should have one of the gifts of the Spirit, talking in tongues, for example. And if you don't have that, then they actually question whether you actually are baptized with the Spirit. And obviously they believe in water baptism. Most Pentecostals believe that you have to be baptized with water, although there's a division there too, because some of them believe that they know that the water baptism, the water does not save you. They know that it's the blood of Jesus that saves us. And yet they still do it. And then others believe, no, no, it is uh, for salvation. You have to be baptized with water because that is the element that actually saves us. And then you get the good old churches, the traditional denominational churches that many of us are from. And they, while they still believe in water baptism for remission of sins, they completely reject the miracles, signs and wonders. So then you look at the world today and you look at all these different churches and Christians. They all adhere to the one great commission. Yet they're picking and choosing parts of it that suit their own view, their own church doctrine, or their own opinion. And I believe that's wrong. This is a package deal. You either accept and believe and practice the whole Great Commission, or you do none of it. The question is not really 
What should we be preaching and practicing of the Great Commission? The question that everyone overlooks is should we be preaching and practicing the Great Commission today? Because this is where most of the churches in Christians stop. They stop in Matthew 28 and that's it. Not knowing that there's another commission that follows. As I said before, God raises up the Apostle Paul, sends him to the world and he gives him another commission. So let's look at our third and final commission, the commission of Christ, resurrection ministry to Paul. Do you know that Paul never met Jesus while he was on earth? He never knew Jesus, the earthly Jesus. It was only many years later when he appeared to the Apostle Paul on the road of Damascus in his resurrected form and he said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? So he raised the Apostle Paul up and said simply this, Paul, the Jews have rejected me. Now I'm going to send you to take the gospel and the spiritual blessings of Jesus to the world. And that's what he does. Paul is the only one of the apostles that actually goes out on missionary trips. If you read the book of Acts, the other apostles remain in Jerusalem, preaching to the Jews for like 15 years, just not winning them over. But as soon as Paul is raised up, what does he do? He goes to Turkey, he goes to Greece, he goes to Rome, he goes all over the world preaching the gospel of Jesus. And he gets a specific commission. And this commission we find in 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 5, 18 to 20. As we conclude, it says this, All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of what? Reconciliation. And God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of what? Reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal to us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Do you see what word comes up often in that passage? Reconciliation. Mentioned five times. And the message is to all. There's no racial discrimination. The first commission was very specific to the Jews only. The second one was to the Jews only and then to the rest of the world. This one is to everybody without any racial discrimination or distinction. So in this commission, God puts everybody at the foot of the cross. It doesn't matter whether you're a Jew or a Gentile. All are sinners and all need Him as our Savior. It's to all people. And the, the, the message, do you, do you don't you read about the kingdom of God in here? Paul never even preached that. The message was the message of reconciliation. Because when we're born into this world, we are born sinners. That's what the Bible says. There is none not righteous, no, not one. We are born into sin, and it's not your personal sin that makes you a sinner. It's that nature of sin. You're born into it, and you can't help it. You sin because you're born into sin. And because we are born into sin, we cannot look upon God, and God can definitely not look upon you. He's a holy, righteous God, and He cannot look upon sin and sinners. So we have a problem. How do we reconcile these two parties? A holy, righteous God with sinful man. And God knew that we couldn't get to Him, so He made a plan to send His Son Jesus into the world. Jesus came and He laid His life down upon the cross of Calvary and He died for your sin. And by placing our faith in Him, we become saved. And in that moment, you become reconciled to God. You can picture it like this. Sinful man and the Holy God and Jesus comes down between them and He takes the hand, your hand, your sinful hand, and He unites you with the Holy God. And in that moment, He reconciles you to the Father. In that way, He makes you have a relationship with the Father, fellowship with the Father. And it's only through Jesus Christ, through His blood. And that was the message of Paul. And what was his ministry? It was lacking and devoid of all signs, miracles and wonders. And water baptism. Last week we spoke about Paul. He says that he has not been sent to baptize, but to preach the gospel. What gospel was it? The gospel of reconciliation. And then I look at the church today and Christians trying to pick some of these verses of the Great Commission and, and try to squeeze it into their view of their, their doctrine. And I find out, well, why don't they just preach the gospel of reconciliation? It's a simple, very beautiful one. Man is a sinner and he needs a savior. God made a way by sending his son Jesus to die for your sins. When you place your faith in him and believe in him, he reconciles you to the Father. That's the gospel that Paul preached. That's the gospel that the church should be preaching. And it's sad to say that through the centuries, the church has taken the great commission 
They try to force in that kingdom commission and, and they've just distorted everything. They've got people very confused and divided and, and just a, a message that went out was so blurred and distorted that we don't know what to believe as opposed to this gospel. Imagine if the church from the beginning just started to preach the gospel of reconciliation. How far ahead we would be with the united church. But today we sit with the church divided, Christians divided, because we're trying to force in the commission that we shouldn't even be practicing or preaching. The gospel for the church today is the message and the ministry of reconciliation, as preached by the Apostle Paul. And now you know the ABCs of the Bible. You know the different dispensations. You know what is meant for the church, what is meant for the Jews. You know about water baptism and spirit baptism. You can divide between the two. The Bible says a workman is not ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Today you have found out about the different commissions of the Bible. There's not just one commission, the so-called Great Commission. There's three commissions. The first one, Jesus gave to the apostles to go to the Jews only. The second one, to the Jews first and then to the rest of the world. Because of their rejection of Jesus the Messiah, God raised up Paul and gave him a third commission and said, go and preach to the world the gospel of reconciliation. And now as a Christian, as believers, as a family of God, you know the truth of the word of God. The responsibility lies on you now to not only believe it, but to go and preach it to the rest of the world. As you go out preaching the ABCs of the Bible. Amen.